Well, a cormorant found my ponds. It got quite a few fish before we managed to scare it off. So I thought this was a perfect time to talk about the life cycles within a pond. Understanding the life cycles can help you determine what exactly you want to expect from your pond. And it also puts things into perspective when something like this happens. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. Anyone that watches the channel knows I love ecosystem ponds that utilize bacterias, microorganisms, rocks, pebble, fish and plants to try and recreate a natural environment. The idea is to create a system that looks after itself with very little interference from me. So I think a good place to start is to talk about the stages of life of the pond itself. Then I'll talk about some of the life cycles and food chains that we want to encourage in a backyard pond. Keep in mind, I'm not a scientist. This is just my very basic interpretation. I personally find most scientific papers boring filled with big words that I need to look up and it hurts my puny brain. So hopefully this more basic interpretation will help people get the most from their ponds. Freshwater systems have four life stages. These life stages can play out over hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of years. But in a man-made pond, these life stages are greatly accelerated. That's because of a number of factors which I'll come back to later. For now, let's quickly look at the stages. The first stage is the oglotrophic. This basically means that the water has very little life. In nature, that would be something like a freshwater stream up in the mountains. In a backyard pond, it would be a new pond. There's none of the base levels of the food chain yet, or they're in very short supply. Therefore, the pond cannot support a lot of fish unless you supplement with feeding. And as you feed the fish and the fish produce waste, other life is drawn to the pond. Nutrient levels will increase, bacteria and microorganisms colonize the pond, water plants will grow, and a more robust ecosystem starts taking shape. And that brings us to the metatrophic stage. This stage can support more life Plants grow well, but not excessively. There's a good amount of natural food available for the fish and their babies. For me personally, this is the sweet spot for a backyard pond. But the cycle goes on. The babies get bigger, produce more waste, the plants start dropping leaves into the water and their roots trap sediments. Now we move into the eutrophic stage. This stage is teeming with life and plant life explodes fueled by so much nutrient being available, the sediments start to build up more and more. Because of the abundance of food, the fish grow really fast. For me, this is where it's time for a clean. Remove the sediments and thin out some of those plants. If we left the pond alone, it would go hyper eutrophic and the boom and bust cycles of the plants just continue until the pond's no longer a pond. How long it takes for each cycle depends on many factors, but there are some things that we can do to help slow down the process. The first one is not overstocking the pond. Less fish means less nutrient is being released into the water. If you don't have too many fish, you shouldn't need to feed them. They'll just eat the natural food sources within the pond. Second is increasing the circulation and oxygen. Moving the water around keeps lightweight sediment suspended. Installing the pond with a skimmer is a great way to capture these lightweight materials before they sink and decompose inside the pond. I like to build my own skimmers. I'll put a link in the description. The bacteria and microorganisms that help break down fish waste and other organic materials need oxygen. So having plenty of water agitation is a great way to ensure that they always have enough oxygen to thrive. Thirdly, reduce sediment traps. Too many plants within the pond will trap leaves, pollen, etc. that would otherwise be captured by the skimmer. And also the plant material breaking down within the pond 
will increase that amount of sedimentation. In this pond I removed all the eelgrass and that made a huge difference. Don't get me wrong, I love plants and they're an important part of the ecosystem. I just prefer to keep them on the margins, in the stream, and of course my favorite, in the bog filter. Of course, a couple of water lilies is the exception. You just gotta have them. And the last thing that'll help slow down the cycle is having a really good biological filter or doing frequent water changes. The best biological filter in my opinion is a bog or a wetland filter. These are incredibly efficient at removing nutrients from the water itself. Again, if you're interested, I've got plenty of videos talking about the benefits of bog filters. And I also have videos on how to build them. So if you're interested, feel free to check those out. So by reducing the amount of nutrients available in the water, the slower the plants will grow, which includes algae. So that's my basic understanding of a pond life cycle and how we can sort of slow down that process. Now, if I haven't already bored you to tears, let me talk a little bit about the life cycles of the organisms and animals within the pond. I think the most helpful way to look at the life cycles within the pond is to look at the entire food chain. So at the base of the food chain, we have the photoplanktons. Photoplanktons are plants. In our ponds, that would be things like algae and diatoms. Zooplankton feed on photoplankton. Zooplankton are microscopic animals. Examples are copiapods and rotifers. Zooplankton are a food source for fish larvae. And fish larvae are a food source for small fish. And small fish are a food source for larger fish. And larger fish are a food source for that cormorant that visited me. So what's happening is that nutrient is constantly being consumed and pushed further up the food chain. This is a good thing as it stops imbalances and it means less work for us. So when the cormorant had a snack on my fish, it removed all the nutrient that it took for a tiny egg to become an adult fish. <laughs> now I was planning on talking about that now that a few of the adult fish are gone, it presents an opportunity for some of the baby fish to reach adulthood. However, in the time it's taken me to edit the video, the cormorant came back and well, he ate all the goldfish in the two ponds that have goldfish. So for the time being at least, it's time for another life cycle to begin, and that will be for the frogs and the tadpoles. With no fish, the tadpoles will thrive. The life cycle of a tadpole into a frog is incredibly beneficial for a pond owner, as the tadpoles gobble up some of that nutrient to become frogs, and then the adult frog hops away. I mean, I could of course net the pond or use fishing wire, things like that. But the way I look at it, the pond's part of the larger ecosystem and the cormorant's got to eat too. At the moment it's winter here, maybe in the spring I'll add some more goldfish. We'll see how we go. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.